So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do a bathroom demolition to do it safe and have a lot of fun. So the first step of any renovation, of course, is demolition. And that's a fancy word for take out the old stuff. So what we've got going on here today is, let's just talk real quick about some safety equipment. Um, I got these awesome gloves of the color of my football team. It works. Uh, you're also, if you're a homeowner, you're going to want to get some, maybe some eye protection. Working with this tile, when you're working with it, you know, you get a shard or you're going to get cut edges. You want to make sure you're being smart about it. Another good thing would be to get a mask. A lot of the reasons we're ripping these bathrooms out is because we got mold in behind the walls. This is an N95 mask. It's for particulates. This is especially good for dust and mold spores and that sort of thing. So you buy three of these for 10 bucks and they'll last for the entire length of the renovation. Make sure you make that investment. And if you don't own a fancy pair of gloves, I grabbed these from the store today. These are five bucks. This is a leather palm, leather backing on it. Great investment if you're DIYer, one size fits all. So I would suggest those as well. Now, before we get into this, let's talk about the process. Demolition, of course, is just the removal of what was installed in the reverse order. And if you follow that advice, everything will go well. But before we get started, rule number one, turn off the water. I know that you have control, you can turn off the valve and all of these wonderful things, but you never really know what's behind a wall. So to protect your home and your investment, just turn off the water and open the taps at the top of the house and open the taps at the bottom of the house, drain out all the lines and get rid of the pressure. There we go. We just hear the air rushing. So we're cleaning out the lines. Now we know when we renovate, we're not gonna be able to cut a line and have a pipe burst on us. So if we're ripping out the bathroom, you need a few basic tools here. One is a tub remover tool. You can find this at your hardware store, plumbing department, about 10 bucks. A uh, screwdriver to turn it, a couple of different bits. Usually the Phillips head and the flat head is about all you're gonna run into. Got your drill and you're gonna need your Allen keys. Now, most of these tubs here, they have a set screw on the bottom. You can't see it, it's in an awkward spot, but you need to know it's there so you don't drive yourself crazy trying to unthread this or rip it off the wall. Until that set screw is released, you can't remove this. So why don't we just start there? Um, this is a Delta system. It's an Imperial system, of course. So this is a 532nd bit and you gotta go underneath here. So we go to this side and usually one twist is enough to release this darn thing. Yep. All right. So now you can see it on camera. It makes sense, right? That sits right in there. Now you can stick this in a whole lot of different places and be very unsuccessful. So be patient with it. Turn it a little bit until you feel it sit in the seat and then you can give it a turn. All right. Of course we have the shower valve. Usually these handles have a decorative cap on it and you can just use a screwdriver to pop that off. But it has a set screw as well. Now that that's out of the way, there's usually a couple of screws on the plate. These older model systems always have surface screws. The newer ones, there's a wall plate that gets mounted and it snaps in, but that makes that simple. So now your wall can be removed without interrupting your plumbing, okay? Secondly, we want to remove the overflow in the waste now. Usually just one or two screws here. The idea here is the plumbing behind the tub is going to stay in place when you remove the tub. So you have to disengage the trims here so that that can happen. So here's my fancy tub remover tool. And it has got two different functions on this, depending on the size of the tub. This, the short end goes right in there, nice and snug over the crossbars. And the way I do this is I lay a screwdriver across the top, push down and turn counterclockwise. Now in the older tubs, because it's steel, they usually just use plumber's putty to put these on. This tub strainer basket is so recessed, my tub remover tool is of use. Zero, useless, not gonna help. All right, I gotta have to show you another trick. So that is amazing. That's the first time ever my tub remover tool didn't work for me. I'm not sure what's going on with this, but uh, you know, not everything is created equal, right? So 
we got a couple of tips that it might work for you. You can use two really thick screwdrivers, or you can use what I got here, a couple of old Allen keys, great big ones. Here's we go. And I'm going to show you two tricks here. One of them is you just put in the Allen keys, okay, and then you create this cross again, and you can force like that, and you can unthread it that way. Now this only works if the crossbars in the bottom of the the tub drain here are intact, okay. And you can see that works quite well. And you can put as much force as you need to on that and unthread it. If you have a tub strainer here that the crosses have eroded away or rusted away, here's another thing you can do. Realize that this is a chrome plated material. It's usually a soft metal like a brass. You can take an old chisel, put it on the edge of that, and kind of go square on just to create a dent. And then you can lay it a little flatter. And you can just tap it around. That takes a lot of time, makes a lot of noise, but it is effective. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not sure how to remove a tub if you don't get this out, because now you're connected to the house's plumbing. If you have to remove this and you can't remove this in strainer, you're going to use it cutting tool or a torch and cut the tub in half, I don't know, unbelievable. So it's good to have a couple of tricks up your sleeve. And voila, renovator one, bathroom nothing. All right, so all shower heads are created equal. They usually have a little shower arm and there's a compression fitting on this as well. So if you just give it a little bit of a turn and a pull, you can get this out of the way. All right, now there's got a couple of options here. You can just grab right in here with your pliers and just turn it. And you're probably gonna just take the shower head off. Okay, and then you can try giving this a turn. It can be a little bit frustrating because the guy that put this in originally usually used a lot of force. Okay, so get a good grip on it. And then once you get that started, you can just kind of finish it off by hand. Of course, if you're stuck and the wrench isn't working for you, you can combine this with another trick that I know. You get the wrench on there nice and tight, throw a screwdriver in the pipe. It gives you extra leverage. And you can pull both of those at the same time. There's no way that that went on strong enough that that won't work. So once we've got our fixtures removed, the next thing is to get rid of all the silicone joints that are around here because we're going to be removing the walls next and that is a lot easier to do if they are not silicone to the tub. Just grab your knife and cut. The ceiling doesn't appear to be... Yeah, it is siliconed and painted. So we want to cut that loose as well. All right, so now it's time to remove the walls. And if you've grabbed your sledgehammer or one of these beautiful Stanley bars, you've got the wrong tool in your hand. <laughs> like I said before, this is more surgery. So we have to be smart because what we want to do is we want to reinstall the new tubs around in the same space without creating a mountain of work repairing walls. So the technique that you want to use here is really simple. Grab an old flat chisel and a hammer, and you want to remove this tile one at a time so we have control over the wall, and hopefully we don't damage the wall board so badly. And you can see tile chips, so make sure you wear your glasses. Working like this allows us to cut this wall board right beside the old painted line and then we can create a tile line from the same spot on the wall so we don't have to repair all the drywall and repaint. Now, if you've never done this kind of work before, you need to understand 
that when ceramic tile breaks like that, it's not the clay that's dangerous, it's the glaze. This glaze is razor sharp. So make sure you're wearing your gloves. Now I can create a cut line and I can cut right down the drywall. Then we're ready to remove the walls. Okay, so here's the deal. If you're a home renovator and you're working on your own house um, and you don't want to be dressed up like a clown with a diaper on your face, you know, you realize you're taking some risk, okay? So uh, for me, I'm not a big fan of wearing the mask. Let's get rid of that. And I'll tell you why. I find wearing the mask makes it really hard to breathe. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I guess I'm a little old school. I kind of believe like whatever you do for a living is going to kill you. So, you know, you can try to take all the safety precautions you like to avoid injury. That's one thing. But I'm not going to worry about a little bit of dust now and again. Uh, if I'm working in a real dusty environment, I set up negative air and I'll wear a mask on occasion. Uh, I'm gonna cut uh, eight feet of drywall now with a reciprocator. It's gonna make a little dirt. And uh, if you're afraid of dirt, then don't renovate. <laughs> uh. You'll see here, I'm just gonna cut about one inch back from my finish line. This is outside of the tub. It's not necessary to have any kind of waterproof board here. So that's why I'm cutting at this point. And the other way to do this is with a knife. If you don't have one of those fancy tools, you can always use a knife. Now, looks like the last renovator that was here used a green board. It's jointed right at the same spot as what we're doing. And then they taped it and did a bunch of mud work. So I got a half inch of mud to carve through first, but if you're patient, run this down a few times. It'll eventually work right through to the back of the drywall. Okay. There we go. Whew. I'm going to show you my technique for removing the tub surround walls. No, you don't chisel off every tile. I actually had someone comment in the section below about, could I just remove all the tile with a chisel and then tile again on the same wall board? And the answer is no, for obvious reasons like this. The surface protection, that paper that's been treated for the anti-mold and the water resistance, it's going to get damaged, okay? It's not worth your effort to try to save anything here because I'll show you how, you'll see in a second. You saw how hard it was to chip away at this. I can remove the rest of these walls in less than 10 minutes, okay? So bear with me and watch the technique. And it's real simple. What we're looking at is just smashing holes right through everything in the same swing. Okay. So here, that's a, that's a stud. That's a stud. I've cut the wall board away. Because I'm wearing my safety glasses and my gloves, I can get in there and reach in and grab it. Now just use your, your force and now use your hammer and just shake it. It'll jiggle all of the drywall screws that are in this board loose from the backside. All right. Generally, it comes out in one piece. Things like this tear off. Okay. Now, You can just walk that right out to your garbage bin. So a lot of homeowners I know have the same kind of problem. What to do with the garbage? They don't want to pile it up in their garage. They can't put it on the curb for the city to pick up. So here we go. We're going to show you a little secret. I got to do this quick before my bag blows away. <laughs> ah. 
All right. If you've never seen this before, this is dumpster in a bag. You can buy this at the local building stores. It's a brilliant little invention. Comes with these two straps. All you gotta do is lay it out near your curb. And when you're done, you call the 1-800 number that's on the side of the bag, pay with your visa over the phone. These guys will come by, grab an arm, scoop it up, take it away for you. The whole thing full, I can put an entire bathroom in there. Tub, toilet, walls, floors, the whole thing, including the vanity in the top. It's about $250 for removal. Brilliant deal. If you want to get a roll-off bin, you risk damage in your driveway, it takes a lot more space, and usually start at five or 600 bucks. So this is perfect project size. So a quick trick here before you start pulling off all the walls to help reduce your scope of work when you're done. Remember the, um, the ceiling here, there's going to be a drywall joint. The tape will go from here up and then across. And if you're not careful to cut through the paper before you rip off this wall, you'll peel it off the ceiling. Then you're going to have to repair the drywall and repaint the ceiling again. So we try our best to avoid that from happening. We run our knife across here a few times. Almost like we're trying to cut it right through the drywall. Because lots of people use a lot of mud in the corners. You want to make sure you got that paper cut. All right, now it's right back to the same technique, only different. And just give it little tugs, little vibrations. Until all these screws are popped loose. All right. And then once we've got it kind of separated, we'll downward force so that we don't damage our ceiling. There we go. So here's the edge of our ceiling now. That is perfect. There's absolutely zero damage here. It's exactly what we're looking for. Uh, when we go back with our new wall board and tile, our new tile is going to be thicker than this old stuff. This is what we like to call biscuit. It's really thin. The newer one's thicker, so it'll actually have a thicker profile, and that is going to put us in a position where we're going to finish clean on that ceiling, no rework on the ceiling. Whew. There's another whole day you're not going to waste. I get a lot of people asking me questions about this sort of situation here, this black and the insulation, and they ask these questions in the comment section below. And <laughs> what you want to know is this is not mold, right? This is air movement. And when air is moving through a building cavity, it's going to pick up whatever dirt is around and it's going to deposit it wherever there's resistance. So this is just air movement, probably because it just wasn't sealed up tight enough on the back side of this wall. It's nothing to be concerned about. It doesn't affect the insulation quality. It just looks ugly. So if it bothers you, you can replace it, but you don't need to. Okay, so this is an empty cavity. We got plumbing and wiring back here. That's a really deep wall. It's a mechanical wall. Probably gonna have heat runs as well. So here you want to be careful. Watch your swing. You don't want to go all too hard and punch right through here because you might hit something important and wreck it. Remember, keep your mouth closed when you're doing this sort of thing. <laughs> Here we go. Same technique. All right, make sure the silicone is cut. Bit of a vibration. One thing you're going to want to do here, check for nails on the adjacent wall. Okay, make sure there's room for that wall board to open up. And when you get it going, it'll just open like a door. And again, since you're walking through your house, fill up all the broken bits that are going to make a mess along the way. You might as well leave all the mess in the same room so then you don't have to clean the entire home later. There we go. Now, this piece of board is probably about 60 or 70 pounds, so keep that in mind. Um, if you're working alone or 70 pounds is too much to carry, you can just smash across 
and then smash down first and you can reduce the size of the board. Right, so for the top side of this wall, I really like to smash it down into two pieces, tearing out this whole wall and protecting the ceiling while carrying all that weight and not slicing your leg on this cut tile. It can be a trick. So what I would do, let's just find a place where we know the cavity is safe. We'll smash right up that grout line to the ceiling. Now I'm going to put my hammer up against the frame on an angle here so that I can pry it off again. Same thing, All right? You want to pull it down from the ceiling away from your cut line. Well, I mean, it's obvious that there's a lot more to do in a demolition than just taking out a sledgehammer and beating the hell out of it. I know they love to show that on TV, but let's stop and think here for a second. What if we beat the tar out of the wall and we hit the stack, right? You punch a hole in this bad boy. Now you're bringing in the plumber and you're replacing the stack right into the attic. That's attic work as well. What if you swing the hammer here and you puncture the joint in this copper line? If you didn't notice that you did that, you'd put your bathroom back together again, turn the water back on, poof, you'd flood out the entire house. So when you're tearing things apart, if you don't know what's on the other side or inside that wall, which you don't, <laughs> you have to use some patience and a little bit of skill. I know it's great TV, but using a sledgehammer inside a bathroom is really not what that tool was made for. Now, we don't want to wreck the ceiling, so we've got to pull down. There we go. Ah, we're batting a thousand so far we've saved the ceiling <laughs> remember when you're doing a demolition and you're doing an isolated project like we're only doing the tub and the tub surround it's our job to now stop and think how do i keep the scope of work from getting out of control okay so one of the things i don't want to do is i don't want to have to start getting into finished carpentry because that's a brand new set of tools that's a brand new day of work Oh my goodness. So what we have is an outside corner bead holding this wall in place. So I'm going to grab my hacksaw and I'm going to cut my corner bead. Okay. I'm going to set it and go on a 45 degree angle and you'll cut both sides. There we go. Now when I rip apart my corner bead on my wall, I'm going to leave all the trim alone. There's another whole set of tools and a whole setup. I mean, can you imagine having to set up all your tools to make two cuts? What a pain in the butt. Okay, so now this bathroom here is basically a great big square and they've put the tub in here and added this wall to bring the controls into. This style of construction means that you are going to be doing some mud work and you're going to have to do some paint, but it's only on a tiny little wall, okay? So when you're taking this apart, don't even try to save the corner. Don't try to peel it open to put it back later. You're going to crack the paint line. You're going to make a mess. Just get it out of the way. Move on. It's going to be in the way of installing your wall as well. And you can see here they've done it with nails. Okay. So the best way to get rid of this is actually swing the claw hammer at it right on the corner. Once you've popped it off the wall, you can just give it a yank. All right, now, and you can be as surgical as you want to. Find each nail, pull them out, all right? Make sure it's not gonna do anything fancy. Done. Same thing, just take your time. It's easier when you're going down because it'll bend and break at everywhere the nail is. You just put your claw behind it, and then you pull it out, and then you can pull it down again. And if it doesn't break away nice and clean for you, just throw your claw into the wall board. So you get the grip, and then you can rip it out. And that's where we cut it. Perfect. One more time. Okay. Remember to always close the blade before you put it in your pocket. <laughs> 
Yeah, I learned that one the hard way. <laughs> so the majority of our demo is complete. So before we pull out the tub, we're going to just take a minute, take all the nails and screws out of the wall, clean up any extra debris that needs to be removed. And then we're going to take everything off the floor, sweep, clean out the tub, vacuum. We're going to start with a clean slate again before I start messing with the tub. Because the secret here is that the floor in this bathroom we want to keep, okay? So we're actually reinstalling it with the same floor still attached. So we want to take a little extra care here and make sure that as we go, we're not causing any damage that's not necessary. Again, keep your scope of work reduced. And then this kind of project is very predictable. So the next step in our demolition is we have to remove the tub. But before we can move the tub, we have to cut our plumbing out. And here's why. We're in an alcove situation and this tub won't pull straight out into the room because the frame is exactly the same size as the tub. But on that side of the wall, there's drywall. So I have half an inch too small to be able to slide the tub out. So what I have to do is I have to lift it, roll it, and then slide it in between the, the studs of the wall in order to take it out. And the reason I want to do it that way is because then I'm not affecting and increasing the scope of work by causing new drywall work and new painting going on. It takes a few extra minutes but if you take the time to cut the, the plumbing out of the way then you, and pull all the nails, you have all the room that you're going to need to be able to roll the tub out. And we'll show you how to do that in just a minute. But first, remember we have our water supply off. You just need one of these little copper cutting tubes. And I'm going to pick a spot that's convenient for me for putting the plumbing back together. I don't want to have it anywhere near my wood bracing. Okay, so now we've cut and capped all of our plumbing. It's completely out of the way now so we can move our tub. And you can see the entire process for how to do all this plumbing on our next Copper to Pex video. So the last step that we have before we pull our tub out is we just go around and make sure that we pull out all of these nails and screws. Again, the gap here is exactly 60 inch. The tub is exactly 60 inch. So there's no room to maneuver here if we're constantly bumping into nails and screws. So don't drive yourself crazy. Just take two minutes. So just keep in mind when you're cleaning your wall before you pull the tub out, when you pull the tub out, you're going to want to be comfortable. So you're going to roll it and you're going to lift it up to where you're standing comfortable. So you're going to hold the tub here. You got another 32 inches. So you want to make sure you're, you're pulling all the nails up to four, four and a half feet, just so that you're not getting anything snagged, especially your hands. All right. So, so far we've managed to remove all of the shower fixtures, all of the walls, all of the tile, and we haven't damaged anything outside of our scope of work, which is new tub and new tile surround. So the last thing we got to do before we pull the tub, make sure we cut out the silicone joint down here. And I mean, sacrifice your blade. Get that right in there. You're going to dull off the tip <laughs> and that's okay. That's why they make them break offs. Okay. Now we've got this moving mat here so that we have somewhere to set this tub after we pull it out. Remember, we're trying to remove the reinstall the tub in the same exact spot without damaging this tile. If we pull this off, we manage to keep this cost of this job down to $3,000 instead of upwards of six or seven. That would be awesome. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to do this on my own for all of the benefit of everyone out there who doesn't have anybody around who can help them out. Um, I actually am pretty lucky here because I don't have a lot of studs in my walls on the end. I've got this stud here and I've got this big cavity here that I can work with. I've only got one on the other side and all my plumbing's out of the way. So I should be okay to find some room to wiggle this out. What I want to do is I want to just first of all start by rolling it forward and then kicking it in so that I break the seal and get this tub away from the tile. And I think I've done that okay. And already, I'm getting caught on the drywall over here. And the secret to how this works is you got to give it just a bit of a twist and then get this edge of the tub in between the studs into the insulation cavity so you can slide it over a little bit. You don't need a whole lot of extra room to wiggle one of these out. Just a little bit. There we go. Now at this point, because this is a steel tub, uh, I would recommend grabbing a neighbor. <laughs> Get some extra help carrying this down the stairs. I know there's a lot of people out there. We could probably lift this up and walk out. No problem. But remember the goal here is to reduce the scope of work. 
And putting a hole in a wall on the way down the staircase is not going to help you out with that. Throw it in. Just a note, if you do your demolition the day before garbage day and you want to recycle your tub, the easiest way to do it is leave it on your curb on, for garbage day morning. There's always somebody driving around the neighborhood with a truck picking up metal things to take for recycling. <laughs> We've got a typical situation. We've got a lot of debris here, but I just wanted to point out, once again, here's the stack. Our plumbing line comes out on a 45, comes across to pick up this vent, and then there's a P-trap to here, and then we have this plumbing. And this looks like it could be reused. But here's the issue. Our new tub has got a different body mold to it. So our center line is going to be in a different location. All right, we don't have a four inch ledge on the front with a little edge on the back. So we're actually going to be moving over here a little bit. And the back side has got to go up to 20 inches, not 16. So although this looks like this might be able to be saved and reused, the fact is it'll be a lot easier for us to just start from scratch and put everything exactly where we want it. So we're going to leave this in place for now because there is a P-trap full of water. But tomorrow when we start to redo the plumbing, we'll cut open the floor a little bit and cut this pipe off and we're going to establish a brand new plumbing system here for the drain. I know it's a bit of a fight, you know, you'd like to be able to save something if you can, but in the long run you're going to cause yourself a lot of problem. And this kind of stuff should not be attached to your tub under pressure. Don't try to ever force it in there. That's a sure way to make it leak. Okay, so if you like this kind of content, tips and tricks to renovate your home, give us a thumbs up. If you've got questions about renovations in your house, put them in the comments below. We answer them every day. Talk to you soon.